Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Timothy Johnson, who's the president of Lions Wealth Financial Group. Timothy, welcome to the program. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Hey, you're welcome, and I am looking forward to talking to you because I love um, I love looking at people's business names and how they chose them and lion's wealth. I just really love that word picture. It almost makes me think of well, you get the lion's share. Well, if you want to have the <laughs> lion's wealth, you know, I'm excited to talk to you about that. So, did you have a specific thought in mind when you chose the name Lion's Wealth? Awesome, and thank thank you for liking the name. When I when the name came to mind, it's typically I'm a Leo, so when okay. I'm thinking about Leo, I'm thinking yeah. about Lion, and then I'm thinking about financial planning, and it just kind of worked together. Lion's yeah. wealth, and it, and it just worked together, and there you go, cool. Then Lion's wealth. Well, and you know who's the king of the jungle? You know we want to, we want to. <laughs> so that's awesome. Well, I know today I we want to say that. <laughs> well, right. I mean, but but it is that that symbol of power. You know, you didn't, uh, you know, you didn't name it, you know, like Bunny Rabbit's Financial. So it's, you know, it's a symbol of power and that's uh, really strong. So I really do like, I love your uh, website and the logo. So that's really cool. So I want to dive into how people should be addressing their wealth, their financial future as it relates to social security. And I feel that so many times people either or definitely put off planning for retirement till the future. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I guess I better do that now that I'm, you know, a month and a half away from needing to retire. And they should have started a long time ago. But one of those factors is understanding the many nuances of Social Security. So what are some of the ways you work with your clients on helping them to maximize Social Security income? Great, great, great question, Mike. When you when you think about Social Security, and it's similar to what you stated, people don't properly plan. And a lot of times, Social Security wasn't created to be the sole source of your retirement. But as we know in these day and times, it's, it's a big part of a lot of people's retirement. So you ask the question, how do we typically maximize our clients' income when it comes down to Social Security? We look at a, we look at a couple of different ways. But my biggest way is saying proper retirement planning. Yeah. This is a very critical topic for baby boomers. And baby boomers... You typically fall in the range of 1946 to 1964, and everybody heard the the stats. There are 10,000 baby boomers retiring each day. Wow. So Social Security is a is a is a huge part of planning in their retirement. And when we think about proper retirement planning, as we said before, it wasn't meant to be the sole source of your retirement income. So the goal is how do we integrate Social Security with your investment management, with your pension planning, with your IRA, and we sit down with our clients and we create a comprehensive plan so they can maximize the amount they can receive in retirement as well as when they should receive their Social Security uh, and coordinate it with the rest of their assets. So you ask a question, a lot of times people think it's just a strictly an age. When I hit this age, I'm taking Social Security. No, you yep. want to coordinate it with your assets, and you want to make sure you're maximizing the right time, and you do this by proper retirement planning. And that's what we focus on at the firm when we sit down with our clients. Yeah, that's really huge. It's, and you brought up something that I think my mind went one place, and it was like, you know what? This is so obvious, but it just struck me that – I'll bet there's a huge percentage of people out there that in their mind, they think that when I'm done working and I quote unquote retire, then here comes my social security and that's all I need to worry about. But in reality, social security is um, just a portion, a part of a proper retirement plan. You should have a lot more things going than just hanging your hat on social security. So because of that, it is such an important thing to make sure you have polished up and made all the right decisions on you know, making these uh, choices because it's not the same for everybody, right? I mean, I think a lot of people realize that, oh, well, you can claim Social Security 
early, you can put it off. But what are some of those um, those aspects where if you do um, claim early but before a certain age, is that possible and is it even a good thing? That's correct, Mike. When you when you really think about it, there's I, I want to break down. There's three phases of retirement, right? When it comes down to Social Security, there's early, there's full, and there's late. Okay. And all of those are associated with a certain age. So early is age 62, full, you're going to fall somewhere in between age 65 to 67. And late, wow, you're waiting all the way until age 70 at that point. Now, I want to give a, a, a quick fact to the listeners. You, you may see on your Social Security statements the term PIA. This is uh, just, just for a quick fact. This is your primary insurance amount. This is pretty much your benefit amount. This is the check that you will receive. This is the amount of the benefit you will receive from Social Security. And you ask the, you ask the question, is there pros, there's cons? What's the benefit of taking it earlier? And is there, is there a con of taking it early yeah. when it comes down to it? I'll start with the cons. A con is you'll permanently reduce the amount that you'll receive. When it comes down to Social Security, the longer you wait, the longer you, the, the more you make. The longer you wait, the more you make. So if you take it early, you can permanently reduce the amount that you can make when it comes down to uh, Social Security at that point. A second con is your cost of living adjustments are lower. If you hmm. take it early, they can uh, your step ups with with inflation, and and we know it's not a lot of it's not a lot of raises when it comes down to Social Security as we speak right now, but starting early permanently reduces that amount for you. And then, and then the third con is typically by the time you hit 62, if you want to take it early, a lot of people are still working. Yeah. So if you're still working and you take Social Security, you can be penalized and have your Social Security taxed at that point. So now it's almost like a double whammy. You're taking, you're, you're paying into it with, yeah being taxed. And, and then when you take it out, you get being taxed. So a lot of times taking it early can, uh, can have a, a, a negative effect when it comes down to the, the long-term outcome. Now, you might be thinking, you know, hey, I'm still working, but if I can get it, I'm going to get it because it'll help mm -hmm. supplement my income. You might be thinking that, you know, times are tough, so let's supplement my income. But those cons you just mentioned are pretty powerful. And the last one to me really stuck out where it's like, you're going to be paying into social security because you're still working. And then if Correct. you make over a certain amount through your job, you're going to be taxed on different social security that you're getting. So you might need to look really hard at that. That's a, that's a really strong consideration. And that's why it's important to sit down with the professional that understands, Hey, you may be taxed here. You may not be taxed here. What's the benefit? What's the pros, the cons? Now, we'll go over some of the pros, and, and some of the pros can easily outweigh the cons. One of the pros, you need it now. You may be in a situation where you definitely need that supplemental income, and if you're at a point where your finances and if you're in your life where you need the income, hey, take it. It's yep. there for you. You paid into it take it. You, you, you know it's going to come with, hey, I may not get any kind of step-ups, but if I need the income, it's there for me. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the, the second one, you may just want the money. You may utilize it to uh, take your trips, purchase family gifts. You may just want the money, but that's not always a, a great reason, but it's a reason. Yeah. And the, and, the, and the third reason, third pro is something that people don't really like to talk about, but it's health wise. Sure. A lot of times if you, if your health is poor or you don't have the situation where you may not make it to life expectancy, so to say, or, or may not have a long life or you may have some health conditions, by all means, take it as early as possible because you want to make sure you can benefit from, the amount that you paid in, even though it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, you want to make sure you can benefit from that, especially if you have some health ailments that may cause you not, not to have a, a, a longer life expectancy. Yeah, so, for sure. so those are some of the pros. Some, those are some of the cons. Can you take it early? 
Yes, but I will always say sit down with a professional and get an understanding of the pros and the cons of taking it early. As it applies to your situation, because everybody's different. You, you know, one of the um, one of the other options you gave was um, late. And to me, you know how people say a word and it's like, what's the first thing you think of when you hear whatever? And late, I feel like, oh, you're late on assignments or late on a payment. And I like to think of it as like delayed. What, what if I delay claiming? You know, I don't want to take it early. So talk a little bit about some of the benefits of delaying if you can. If you've got health, if you've got the financial wherewithal that you can put it off, what are some of the benefits to kind of scooting that out and delaying it a bit? Great question. Interesting concept, Mike. When you when you think about delaying your claim, so for the listener, delaying claim as 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 Mike said, is is going past your full date or falling into your full date and your 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 late date. So anywhere typically in between sixty five to seventy. But if you're going with the late status, let's say we based it on seventy, you receive additional credits and you receive additional funds. As I said before, the longer you wait the more you make. So the longer you can wait and hold off, you'll receive more income when it comes down to the social security. And then the longer you wait, if you reach your full retirement age, you can still work at that point and you won't be penalized for working and you can have your social security. It's almost like having your cake and eating it too. If you're, yeah. you're working and you're receiving your social security, that's some of the benefits of uh, delaying because Social Security Administration gives you delayed retirement credits. So as long as you wait, the longer you wait, the more you can make. Yeah, and and I think that again, getting with someone to like yourself to say, okay, uh, we've already established the fact that due to certain circumstances, you can wait and delay. Here's what that would look like if you waited this many years. Here's what it would be. So it's a very specific calculation, and it is something that I feel like people just must realize. Like you said, it's the you know, do you want to claim early, late? Um, it makes me think of something too. It's like, well, I'll just claim now and then change it up later. You know, if, it, if my situation changes, I'll just swap it out because I can always change things, right? But I hear that you can't really make decisions like that with Social Security. It's like one and done. Yeah, it's a one and done. It's very, it's, it's irrevocable. So you can't just say, hey, I want to take it at 62 and then wait, let me change my mind. I'll take it at 66. Uh, it's irrevocable now. It used to be a way you could kind of move around in the system, but now it's, it's irrevocable. So when you make that decision, it's permanent. So you want to make sure you're making the correct decision, especially taking all the factors into account as looking at your health, looking at your finances, looking at the need and making sure you make the correct decision when it comes down to it. We, we asked earlier about delaying it. That's one of the benefits. You receive more funds. And when you think about delaying and you think about the fact that it could be irrevocable, you have to think about it like a test. You can make 100% on your test, but if you go a little bit longer, you get extra credit. Yep. And now the extra credit comes in, and now, yes, you're making more than the 100% that you typically would have made at that point. So it's great, especially if you're still working, you're in good health, you have longevity, you can delay it. And it's smart to do it because it's an irrevocable decision. You can't go back on it. So those factors play into it. Yeah, that's really, really huge. And I think that too, in our life today, we're fast paced. We we are give it to me now. And, and they, I think that people need to realize it's kind of like when you play chess and you move your piece and keep your finger on it, look around. Okay, is this the right move? Let me look, let me look. Okay, now I'm take my finger off and now it's official. Or it's kind of like, you know, lock it in when, on those game shows. So I think you better realize here's, mm -hmm. I need some help. So make me, help me to make these decisions so I can lock it in. So um, we, we've mentioned this a couple different times, like, you know, sitting down and getting to know some situation. It is not just fill out this form on a clipboard and I will tell you what to do. Um, Absolutely. It's, it, it's so many nuances. And I feel like, um, I feel like we, as, you know, you know, people these days, we just fix problems by going to Google and going, Hey, how do you, and I think that too many times people look 
for to Google for the wrong things. Like they look at them like Dr. <laughs> Google or, you know, like, well, here's this ailment. What should I do? And it's like, you need to go to the doctor. So what about people that think how to make social security claiming decisions? You can find all kinds of stuff on Google. I'm certain. Is that a good move or, or not? That's, that's very interesting, Mike, because I, I'm going to do it yourself. Right? I, I will sure. Google whatever I need to do. If it's a repair, if it's an ailment, the first thing I will typically do is Google it. So I don't. I, I can look at it from a standpoint of you want to use Google responsibly. Google can be a very reliable source. It's a great way to jump start the thought process when it comes to Social Security planning. You can research a lot of the basics on the topic. To me, I love when families come in and they've done some research and they have specific questions on the topic. And even if there's no questions or if they haven't done any research, we still provide the the proper guidance. Mm -hmm. But utilizing Google as a tool, yes, don't use it as the end-all, be-all, but I will say it's a good start. It's a it's a great great way to jump start the research. Yes, yeah, that's a that's a good point. And you know, along those same lines, someone might go, well, okay, I get it. You know, you can't believe everything on the internet. So why don't I just go to the Social Security website because they've got a lot of great stuff. They've got documents and all kinds of things. What about that or calling Social Security? Won't they have my best interest in mind? Great point. Great point. The Social Security website and calling again is a great resource. It has plenty of educational material. A lot of do-it-yourselfers uh, in this world, they'll call, they'll figure out that information. Uh, like I said before, when I have a task, I have a problem, I typically research it first to see if I can find a solution. Mm-hmm. And the same can be done for those individuals and families who, who are looking to plan for Social Security. But sitting with the clients, they typically tell me one thing. And this is the misconception when it comes down to just researching on Social Security, the website. Their thought process is, I paid into this system. I want to get money back out. Yeah. Now, you can read the information and there's a lot of research, but some of the concepts such as, as we said earlier, provisional income, meaning if I work or if I make too much money, my Social Security will be taxed. How do I uh, integrate this with my 401k, my IRAs, my 403b when I'm taking distributions? How do I integrate this with uh, different kind of brokerage accounts to generate income? How does how does my Social Security integrate with pension income? When you do the research on Social Security website, it's only going to speak to a specific scenario based on age. When it comes down to the personal scenarios of your retirement and what you have in your personal situation, that's when typically sitting with an advisor can be a lot more beneficial because they can look at the total total picture. So your question of is the Social Security website or just researching or calling in with a professional, great. Yes, they can give you your numbers. They'll give you your numbers, but they can't tell you about your personal situation. They don't yeah, know that's your a, health. That's a big thing mm-hmm. because, you know, you think, oh, just go online and fill out this form and, you know, what's question number one, question number two, question number three, and you answer it, but there's a story behind the story. You know, there's something underlying that you don't realize. And I've heard people in the past um, say, you know, one time I was talking to this, you know, uh, uh, grandparents, and they had told me this, this, and this about their grand- grandchildren, and all of a sudden, because of something they said, that caused me to go, oh, I now can put this into the – software algorithm and now your social security can be so i think that's the big thing is when you have someone like timothy and his team sitting there with you going tell me about this now how what about this situation and do you foresee all of these things you're asking them questions for the purpose of many potential choices correct correct so what about this? Um, you see a lot of uh, companies that go, we can help you with you know, taxes, financial plan, and they list like <laughs> 28 different bullet points. What about working with someone that's just a gen- generic financial professional versus someone like yourself that has a lot of special specialized knowledge with Social Security? Great, great point. When we, when we spoke 
in the last question, we spoke about understanding someone's total situation from a from a comprehensive standpoint and having the software to identify different things such as break even points when you should take it when you should wait we we look at the full spectrum for a client so when we think about the difference between when someone specializes in social security retirement planning and just a a, a general practitioner so to say it all it always takes me back to I always say see back to sports. Mike, are you are you a sports guy? Yes. Okay. Uh, mainly football, Great. mainly Broncos. <laughs> Man, football Broncos. Okay. Yep. Awesome. 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 Ho- hopefully you get somebody from Green Bay. But uh, but we'll 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 stay on point. Yep. We'll stay on point here. <laughs> we'll stay on point. <laughs> we'll, stay on, we'll stay we'll stay on point here. When it comes down to generalists, I it, decades ago, earlier in my my football playing days. I was on a competitive traveling flat football team and we went to a tournament and I hurt my foot, right? Went to the doctor. After I hurt my foot, I went to the doctor. I I decided to go to a, a, a general family doctor, general practitioner. Went to a family doctor, checked out my foot. You know, he had just probably left the baby, checking the baby's vital. Now he's coming into my office yeah. looking at my foot. So he's looking at he he kind of is a generalist of, of everything. Looked at my foot, said, hey, it looks swollen. If it's still swollen, in two weeks, come back. I'd already kind of tried to walk on it for a week. I couldn't. It was a I couldn't lift off it. I couldn't do anything. I decided to myself, hey, I'm not going to wait two weeks. Let me find a specialist right now. Went to a specialist within about three days. Specialist saw my foot, took an x-ray, and told me the news. Hey, Tim, your Achilles ruptured. You need to have surgery immediately. Within, yep. yep. So within three days, I was I was having surgery. I was in a boot, and all because I saw a specialist at that yep. point. And they knew what and to look I, for. They knew exactly what to look for. And it, 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 it was very interesting because – Going through surgery is always a, a, a difficult thing. And the doctor came in, prepared the surgery, had the surgery, done with my surgery within about 30 to 45 minutes. He was wow. on to the next patient. Yep. Yep. And I, I say all that to say a generalist can just look at something from a 30,000-foot view. Yes. They may, they may see your finances and say, hey, you have Social Security, you have this, but they don't know how to integrate your finances and know – your personal situations. When you're dealing with a specialist, we know how to get down to, as they say, the nitty gritty or get down into the weed of things to understand all the moving parts to make sure our clients are taken care of. Uh, And I I love sitting down with my clients and, and, and sharing different stories with them and they share their stories with me and every situation becomes personal. So we understand as a specialist, we understand their situations personally and we actually uh, we actually are able to move forward and create comprehensive plans based on specialized specialized services. Excellent. Well, Tim, it's just been a real pleasure talking with you about these really vital topics. Thank you for coming on. Let's uh, let's wrap up with what's uh, the best way people can reach out and learn more about Lions Wealth Financial Group. Absolutely. If you ever want to reach me, it's Lions Wealth. If you come to my website, it's lionswealthfinancialgroup.com. You'll see a lot of great information, educational information regarding retirement, Social Security, insurance, different things at that point. And you can find you can find me there and you can reach out and all my contact information there and you can reach me directly. Sounds great. Thank you so much for coming on, Tim. It's been a pleasure having you. Not a problem. Thank you, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.